capital into the capital of World Cup archery. It's very loud in my headset, and let's see if we can get that down a little bit in my headset. I didn't hear myself at first, and now it's too loud. Whatever you're feeding back in here. Test, 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 test. One, two, three, four. Testing, testing. That's better than it was before. Okay. Yeah. First, I couldn't hear myself at all. Then they got it. They pumped up the volume. And Do I have to hold this? I have to hold this down during the whole time. But is that throughout the entire broadcast? Or just when I want to talk to him? One, two, right, right. We, right, we were just doing a test there. That was just a test to see how it was gonna work. So that's fine. Test, 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 test. Boy, it's awfully loud. Um, In the minds of many, this is perhaps the planet's most beautiful city. There's an iconic, world-famous landmark everywhere you look, from the Arc de Triomphe to the Champs-Élysées and the 3,000-year-old Luxor Obelisk. Paris is a veritable fountain of culture, a city of enduring symbols, a city known for distinctive style, museums, theaters, and architecture. Tourists flock to the French capital to take in the sights of this city of light, cruising the River Seine, sampling the cuisine, and staring in wonder at La Tour Eiffel. Today, in the shadow of the Eiffel Tower, many of the world's best with a bow and arrow will turn the French capital into the capital of World Cup archery. Wherever you might be watching, watching good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Welcome to Paris and the Trocadero Gardens, site of World Archery's 2013 World Cup Final. Along with one of Team USA's top coaches, Mel Nichols, I'm Carl Arkey, getting ready for the first arrows to fly over the Trocadero Fountains in the compound quarterfinal matches. So good to have you with us on this Saturday morning in Paris. Beautiful Saturday morning. All righty, there we go. All set to go. Anybody representing 
representing Colombia in the crowd.
Champs-Élysées and the 3,000-year-old obelisk. Paris is a veritable fountain of culture, a city of enduring symbols, a city known for distinctive style, museums, theaters, and architecture. Tourists flock to the French capital to take in the sights of this city of light, cruising the River Seine, sampling the cuisine, and staring in wonder at La Tour Eiffel. Today, in the shadow of the Eiffel Tower, many of the world's best with a bow and arrow will turn the French capital into the capital of World Cup archery. Wherever you might be watching, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Welcome to Paris and the Trocadero Gardens, site of World Archery's 2013 World Cup Final. Along with one of Team USA's top coaches, Mel Nichols, I'm Carl Arkey getting ready for the first arrows to fly over the Trocadero Fountains in the compound quarterfinal matches. And Mel, what a setting. Oh, this is a beautiful venue. I've never seen anything like it. It's unlike any other setting we've ever had for a World Cup final. No, with the Eiffel Tower in the background, this is just truly amazing. How much does that maybe intimidate an athlete? You know, they're going to see it when they walk in and when they walk out. But when they're up on a shooting line, they're focused on the target. And what a sight that is. As you can see, La Torre Eiffel in the background here at Trocadero Gardens, just one of many, many famous landmarks in this incredible city of light, Paris, France. I'm Carl Arkey along with Mel Nichols getting set for the competition on a morning here in Paris where the winds are non-existent. No, it's perfect conditions for archery right now. We should see some big scores. And usually when you go outdoors, that's the main factor, the weather. How yeah. do you deal with that? <laughs> We always worry about the wind, but today they won't have to worry about that. They'll just be able to shoot. So we're getting set for the competition here in Paris, France, where the temperatures are expected to be roughly around 60 degrees, 65 degrees Fahrenheit. As we mentioned a moment ago, the winds are calm, not a factor at the moment, and that Ladies should lead to some very high scoring and some very tight matches. Oh yeah, the there's uh, coming into the final, the, the compound men are so tight, and even the women are, are fairly close to each other, so it's gonna be some good matches today. And it starts out with Pascal Lebec, ranked number seven in the world, taking on the second ranked Albina Langanova. Pascal did not compete in China earlier this year, was fifth at Antalya at stage two, then was eighth at Medellin at stage three, and then stage four, she finished eighth again in Wrocław. So she was very consistent in the top 10 all summer long. Yes, if she would have shot that first event, she would be ranked right up off and playing the top three. So there is Pascal Lebec, one of the French archers competing here at the Trocadero Gardens across the Seine from the Eiffel Tower. And here is Albina Loganova of the Russian Federation, who is about to go head to head with Pascal Lebec for the fourth time in their careers. Albina Loganova, a bronze medalist at stage one in Shanghai, defeating Carly Cochran of the United States. But that was after losing in the semis to Sok Ji Yuan, whom she may face later on today. We'll have to see how it all works out. Albina was 17th at stage two in Antalya, then finished fifth at Medellin in Colombia, and finally picked up a gold medal in Wrocław, defeating Erica Jones of the United States. So a total of four medals here in 2013 for Albina Laganova of the Russian Federation, one of the greatest archers in the history of the sport. Oh yeah, Albany, Albany, uh, Albina, sorry. Uh, says she's peaking right now at the perfect time, so she's really ready for this event. She just turned 30 years old, and so she may very well be at the peak of her career. Good look at Pascal Lebec, who was the silver medalist at the World Championships two years ago in Torino, losing the gold medal to Albina Laganova. Yeah, Albina's are, yeah, this is going to be a good match here. Pascal is really looking forward to it. So Pascal Lebec on target number one, Albina Loganova on target number two, and you see some of the incredible sights here at the Trocadero Fountains as the two archers prepare to do battle for the fourth time in their careers. And Albina Loganova starts it off with a 10. So the pressure immediately on Pascal Lebec. Nine. And just a little bit outside that 10 ring. 
So immediately Albina Longanover takes the lead. By the way, the compound competition <laughs> plays out over five ends, three arrows for each competitor in each of the five ends for a total of 15 shots to decide our winner. World Archery employs a cumulative scoring system in compound to decide the individual matches, which could require a shoot off if the two archers are still tied after those 15 arrows and they are shooting Mel at that 80 centimeter six zone target face, which is 50 meters away and for people back in the United States that's more than half the length of an American football field. Yeah, that's a long ways to shoot at something so small, so very small. This nine. So two nines and an eight for Pascal Lebec to start the match. And that first end is actually a good place to get those nerves out, isn't it? Yeah, Pascal looked like she was a little nervous, holding a little bit too long. Which is understandable considering the circumstances and the setting. As much as they were looking forward to shooting here in Paris in their home country, that's added pressure. Yeah, she was telling me about it this morning that she's feeling a little bit of pressure with, she knows the crowd's here behind her. So a chance to regroup. As the arrows are retrieved 50 meters away. Just to recap the head to head battles between these two, this is a rematch, as we said, of the final of the 2011 World Archery Championships in Torino. Loganova won that match 144 to 140. So they met a total of four times, and Loganova has won three of their encounters. Lebec's only victory coming at the 2012 Indoor World Cup final. But indoors, outdoors, two different animals. Yeah, indoors, you don't have to deal with the elements. Here, you know, we're not dealing with too much right now, but it could pick up for later on this afternoon. Pascal Lebec shooting first on target number one when we resume. Pascal Lebec, qui va tirer cible numéro one. So Pascal Lebec will shoot first here in the second end. After two nines and an eight to start off the match. We shall see how she does here in the second end. He's dead. Much better. Bullseye. Yep, she's calmed down now. And a surprising eight for Albina Laganova. Happens to the best of them, doesn't it? Yes, it didn't look like she was ready for that shot to go. He's 10. Another 10 for Pascal Lebec as the crowd warms the occasion. He's 10. Nine. So 29, and she has essentially wrapped this one up. Nine. So a nine right there. So when set points were tied at two apiece. Unofficially, Pascal Lebec gaining two points back, shooting a 29 on this end. Once again, we are shooting cumulative scores here in the compound round. At least that's our understanding, Mel. Yeah, that's, we should have a one-point match right now. 
Uh, tomorrow will feed us that. saw right there is 56-55, so it's a one-point lead. Yeah. If you're keeping score at home, it's a one-point lead for Albina Laganova, but a nice end for Pascal Lebec. She got herself back into this match. Yes, Pascal calmed down really well after that first end. So Pascal Lebec, who lifts weights, swims, plays badminton, and shoots every single day. Tries to have a well-rounded workout regimen. Very much in this match against Albina Laganova. And starts off with another 10. And now we're tied. Yeah. So Albina giving back a point, and Pascal picking one up with that bullseye. So we're tied at 65. There we've got the correct score up on the screen now. End points and another nine. So Pascal continues to apply the pressure. Yes, she's doing a good job right now. But Albina has been here many, many, many times before. She matches that nine with a nine of her own. So we remain tied at 74 apiece. You can see the wins. Very calm. And Pascal Lebec was rolling up until that shot. That opens the door right now for Albina Laganova, and she usually takes advantage of every opportunity. And she comes up with a 10. So just like that, she goes back up on top by two, Mel. Yeah, Albina's showing why she's won two world championships. She's going to be pretty solid in this match and the rest of it. What's going to separate people here today is going to be the way they handle the mental pressure, the mental aspect of this game, isn't it? Yes, this is, uh, you know, a lot of people don't get to shoot in this, so it's how well you react to it is how you're going to perform. There would be pressure anywhere you have this competition, but when you put it into this setting, that only heightens the pressure. Yeah, it, it probably doubled it. We were talking about it with our team, and they're, they're excited, but they know they're going to have to control their emotions, their heart rate, and everything. There is a good look at Albina Laganova, who finished seventh in Tokyo at last year's World Cup final. She was upset in the first round match last year by Japan's Yumiko Honda after coming in at the top-ranked female compound archer. So I am sure that is playing in the back of Albina's mind. She does not want to go out in the first round again. Two years ago in Istanbul, she finished sixth at the World Cup Finals. And of course was the gold medalist at the World Cup Final in Edinburgh three years ago. Won the World Championships in Torino in 2011. She is definitely one of the sport's most decorated archers. And Pascal Lebec, one of the best in the business as well. Competing for her country here in Paris. And you can see the form displayed by both of those archers and a nine to start off this end. He's so Lebec trailing by three He's now, ten. needs a 10 and gets a 10. Very, very close. But just outside the 10 ring, if it's on that line, it would count as a 10. But this is a game of uh, maybe not even millimeters, centimeters. Yeah, that could win it or lose it right there. And that shot right there is seven. Very disappointing for Pascal Lebec. As she drops further behind, Albina Laganova, who obliges, though, by shooting an eight, so not as much damage done as could have been. Yeah, it could have been worse. We were watching both those archers. They were shaking a little bit. The nerves are getting to them, getting to the end of this match. So after the fourth end, Albina Laganova with 111 out of a possible score of 120. And Pascal Lebec, a score of 108 as she comes up with 26 points in that fourth end. Moments ago, it was tied. 
But Pascal Lebec giving back a few points, especially with that shot of seven. And Albina Loganova just a little bit better, able to build the lead up. So as we head to the fifth and final end, it's a three arrow deficit for Pascal Lebec to make up against this lady, who's very, very, very tough in these situations. Yes, that's gonna be a, a tough challenge right there, but if anybody can do it, I know Pascal can, but she's gonna have her hands full in these next three arrows. Pascal Lebec, who wants to pursue coaching so she can work and study and continue competing. She just graduated with her college degree and will continue her studies in the future, but right now, she is studying the situation as she has three arrows to try to get back into this match to try and force a shoot off or perhaps maybe even win it. You can see the hand shaking. Perfect shot. Bullseye for Pascal Lebec. He's 10. And a 10 for Loganova. Still a three point advantage. Two arrows to go. He's 10. Another 10 for Pascal Lebec. If Loganova is off just a little bit. And Nine. she is, and was almost in the eight ring. Yeah, she was wiggling a little bit on that aim. She gives back a point. Down by two, and down to her final arrow. Pascal Beck, Dees, Dees, Dees. Tens across the board, a great finish for Pascal Lebec. Yeah, she did what she needed to, now she needs help. And eight would tie this and send it to a shoot off. Loganova gets a bullseye and finishes the match. So Albina Loganova will win it by two, 140 to 138. But a great comeback by Pascal Lebec, who did her country proud with those last three arrows. A fantastic finish by Pascal Lebec, but when you give a, an archer like Albina Loganova that kind of an opportunity, she's usually going to take advantage of it. Yes, yeah, she does. She did a really good job in this match, and he started off this day with really good shooters here. So Albina Loganova survives and moves on, and she will face the winner of the next match between Sara Lopez and Alejandra Usquiano. So it's just the beginning of the day. We could perhaps see Albina Loganova at least two more times today. We've got the semifinal matches coming up this afternoon along with the gold and bronze medal matches. But there you see the scores. It was 29-26 after the first end. Lebec picked up two points in the second end. Loganova got one back in the third end, another one in the fourth end. And despite the fact Pascal Lebec outscored her by one in the fifth end, it was too much to overcome. So a narrow two-point decision goes to Albina Loganova over Pascal Lebec. Here in the first quarterfinal match at the World Cup final in Paris, Trocadero Gardens. And there you get a good look at the target faces 50 meters away. And I know some of the archers I talked to yesterday said it was a little bit strange shooting over the fountains, yeah, even though they're not on. They were they were worried about uh, how high it was and how high above the water it was, but they were, their focus should have been on the target, and they were looking at the water a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's no way to simulate anything like this in practice, is there, Mel? No. We, I mean, you've got such a good backdrop on, on the backside of the target that you're looking at, so you really got to try to stay focused on just that gold. Good shot of the crowd here on a Saturday morning in Paris. As you can see, La Tour Eiffel just across the river, the River Seine. This is the center of Paris. One of the most beautiful cities, as we said before, and a place that draws more tourists than any other city Ladies in any other country in the world. The yeah. More than 80 million tourists a year will come and visit 
France, Paris, and the Eiffel Tower. And one of those tourists is on a working vacation right now. I wouldn't even call it a vacation. This is a business trip for Alejandro Usquiano of Colombia, who comes in ranked sixth in the world. She's 20 years old, and she's making her very first World Cup final appearance. Did not compete at stage one in Shanghai, but competed well at stage two in Antalya. Finished 17th individually, and then helped to win a team gold medal for Colombia, her first World Cup medal. Then at stage three, she went one better. She won the gold medal in Medellin her hometown her and her home nation, and she defeated Sarah Lopez, this young lady, also from Colombia, whom she'll be competing against today. Sarah Lopez, 18 years old, ranked third in the world. Again, she also did not compete in China, but then struck gold in Antalya, won the individual gold medal, dropping only four points in the finals, and then won a team gold medal as well. In Medellin, she set a new world record score of 150 during the qualifying rounds. However, lost to Usquiano in the semifinals and then Ana Mendoza in a bronze medal match shoot-off. A fifth place finish in Wrocław, Poland, though, secured her spot here in Paris where we've got the Colombian clash. And I know it's always tough for teammates to go up against each other, especially in the first round. Yeah, they're, you know, it's, we're looking here. We only have one coach here, too, so they're, they're really had a bad draw. <laughs> So it's Usquiano versus Cerro Lopez, the two Colombian archers. And Ms. Usquiano starts off with a oh, excuse me, an eight. And Sara Lopez won better. They have only met once before on the international stage, and that was in Medellin in July. As Usquiano Decent. defeated Lopez 146 to 141 on her way to winning that gold medal. She posts a 10. Decent. And Lopez with a bullseye to maintain a one point edge early on in this match. Well, nine. And a nine to finish it off. So 27 points for Usquiano on her first three shots. These 10 points. So two bullseyes and a nine. A great start for Sarah Lopez, who says she was just as surprised as everybody else in Turkey back in June, I think it was, Mel, when she won that gold medal. Yeah, she, she wasn't expecting much, and that's when usually good things happen sometimes, and it, it happened for her. She shot really well. She's very mature in the sense that when I was speaking with her yesterday, she said, you know, I thought maybe five, six years from now I'd be on the podium, not at the age of 18. Yeah, she she's very mature for her age, and, um, you know, she's going to be a medical student, so that's, I think that helped her. Yeah, I think so, too. Second-year medical student in Columbia, and I asked her what she wanted to go on and become, and she said she wants to be an oncologist. Her grandfather has cancer, and in fact, uh, was not feeling well when she left for Paris, so she's got him in her thoughts here today, but she's got to block all of that out, doesn't she? Yeah, she's just got to worry about keeping in that gold and hopefully the ten ring, and she'll take care of it af afterwards when we're done. There's a good look at Sarah Lopez, all of 18 years old. She came into Antalya ranked 158th in the world. It's amazing what a couple of gold medals will do for your ranking. Yeah, moves you pretty quick. <laughs> Moved her up to third in the world. That's where she came in, ranked, coming to Paris. Yeah. There's the target we were looking for, and there's the bullseye for Usquiano. It starts off this strong. But another bullseye for Sarah Lopez, who says she really looked up to Alejandra Usquiano as she was coming up through the ranks, says Alejandra was her inspiration. Usquiano with an eight. And we'll be trailing after that bullseye now by four points. He's 10. So two tens and an eight for Usquiano. And let's see if Lopez can run the table. 
10, 10, 10. Tens across the board. So Sarah Lopez displaying the form that she uh, displayed in Medellin when she set that world record 150 score. And then, of course, she was outstanding, I thought, in Antalya. I think she only left four points out there that day. Yeah, she's, she's such a good young shooter that uh, she's going to have a really good career. What do you see in her form that you really like? You know, I like when she gets to, when she's holding, all she's focusing on is the target. She, she knows that arrow will hit there. That's really, really good for these young shooters to, to work on. So able to block all the, all the other things out. Yeah, she tells me sometimes she doesn't even see anything else besides the yellow, so that's really good. Carl Arkey along with Mel Nichols on the United States coaching staff here in Paris on a Saturday morning, Trocadero Fountains. And after six arrows, it's a four point edge, 59 to 55. Luciano Sarah Lopez, on target number two. who shot those three bullseyes in the second end, and now has placed the pressure firmly on the shoulders of her fellow teammate, Alejandro Usquiano. So a 10 to start off the third end for Usquiano who started competing in 2008 on the international stage. Uh, nine. And a nine for Lopez. So one point given back. Yeah. Ten. Another 10 for Usquiano. And Lopez can ill afford to falter as Alejandra is Nine. mounting a comeback. Yeah. There's another point back. <clears throat> so that four point lead has been cut to two. Dees, dees, and dees, three dees, tens, dees, tens dees, in a row dees, for Alejandra Usquiano, who is battling back here against Sarah Lopez. And dees, Lopez with a bullseye. Boys. So the lead will be at two, 87 Luciano to 85 in favor Lopez of Sarah Lopez after three ends. Now unofficially, 87 points for Sarah Lopez to Luciano's 85. And as well as she Luciano shot, she still gave back two points, Mel. Yeah, I think she's starting to think about it a little bit. She knows she has two more ends and six more arrows, and it's going to be seen interesting to see what happens now. Is this a dangerous time in between the ends when they're retrieving the arrows and the archers actually have more time to think about things? Yeah, it is, and that's where where, where the coaches come in play. They have to keep these archers calm, keep their minds off it, and it's kind of rough for these two archers because they're splitting a coach out there right now. Mel Nichols, of course, of the United States, who coaches Brady Ellison, also coaches Miranda Leak. What are you saying to your archers at this point in the match when there's this time to think? So, lots of times we're not even talking about archery. We take them completely away. We focus nothing on archery until we hear the horns go off then it's 100%, but we just got to get their minds away. Politics, religion, football. Anything. Probably football, <laughs> a lot of football. Stay away from the politics and the religion. No, no, no politics at all. So after three ends, we're at 87-85 in favor of Sarah Lopez, the 18-year-old who's going up against the woman she calls her inspiration, Alejandra Usquiano. Nine. And a nine will start off this end for Usquiano. Now back to Sarah Lopez, who started shooting compound just four years ago. Nine. And the second year medical student matches Usquiano's nine. So it's still a two point lead. As Usquiano nine. lines up another nine. And at this point, you basically have to be shooting tens. Yes, there's not very many arrows left now. Nine. But Sarah Lopez not able to take advantage of those two nines as she shoots a pair of nines herself. He's ten. So Usquiano picks it up, puts it in the center ring. And unless Lopez can find that center He's ring, ten. which she does, she was in danger of giving back another point or two. Yeah, if she's able to match arrow for arrow now, she'll be okay in the next three arrows. That was a clutch Sarah shot. Yes, it was. <laughs> that was a big shot. She maintains the two-point lead. 115 for Sarah Lopez. 
to 113 for Alejandro Usquiano. So a little bit of a shaky start for Usquiano, put her behind the eight ball, and she's having a hard time getting back into the match. And Sarah Lopez is not letting her get through that door, but we've got three arrows left to go. And as we've all come to see in this board, anything can happen. You never know. Oh, yeah, and anything can happen in these next three arrows because they're, they're feeling a lot of pressure right now, both these teammates are. Their teammates, their friends, Alejandra and Sarah Lopez. Sarah telling me yesterday she was basically just happy to be here, and while she wanted to win this match, she just wanted her country to do well, and she would support whoever won the match, whether it was Alejandra or her. <laughs> yeah, she's very proud of Colombia. A lot of national pride. Dees 10. So a Dees, a 10, to start it off with Usquiano. She throws down the gauntlet. Yes, nine. And a nine for Sarah Lopez on her first shot. So it's a one point advantage for Sarah Lopez with two arrows yet to shoot. Dees Another 10. 10 for Usquiano. And if Lopez shoots anything less than that 10, we could be tied or Usquiano might have the lead. Talk Good. about pressure. Nine. We're tied Nine. at 133 all. So it's basically down to one arrow. It's almost a shoot off. Oh yeah, just about. Dees, ten, ten, it is ten. a shoot off. And Usquiano. Dees. Oh, what a shot Dees. by Lopez. Dees. Bullseye for Lopez. <laughs> Look at the Dees. smile on her face. Yeah, what a tremendous awesome. end. That was an awesome shot by Sarah. Ladies and gentlemen, you will be Two great shots. First by Usquiano to post the 10. Yeah. And then for off. Sarah Lopez, knowing full well she had to shoot a 10. Yeah. And coming up with a 10. And now both these, archers, shooting. both these archers have to do it again, so they're going to feel the same situation. So this is what we live for. We live for the shoot-offs. We love these shoot-offs, don't we? Oh, yeah, this is what gets the crowd into it, too, and that's even better. So we're down to that one arrow shoot-off. We're tied at 143 after the first 15 arrows. And look at the expressions on the faces of these two teammates from Colombia. Sarah Lopez from Pereira. And Alejandro Usquiano, who makes her home in Medellin. As we've mentioned, Sarah, second year medical student, she said when she started studying, a lot of people told her she'd have to quit shooting, but she says she never, ever considered that. She works from sun up to sundown, doesn't she? Oh, yeah. Sometimes we're on social media with a lot of our archers and stuff, and uh, they're telling us they're getting done at midnight, 1 o'clock. <laughs> mm -hmm. I am sure. Trying to balance it all. Studying for medicine. Practicing archery and trying to have some semblance of a life <laughs> outside the sport and outside of school. Plus, the travel is so incredibly uh, taxing. I mean, I hear athletes, uh, especially in our country, the United States, yeah. talking about how tough the travel is. We'll try about a 15,000 mile road trip. Yeah, they travel, you know, most of us travel over 100,000 miles a year, and it, it's, it's really rough on us and our family and everybody, so. Plus, you have to deal with the jet lag and the difference in time zones and trying to get used to things and, and then go out and compete, yeah. compete well. Yeah. So here we go, it's a shoot off. Here, here in our second quarter final match of the day, this will determine who faces Albina Longanova in the semifinals this afternoon. Alejandra Usquiano to shoot first in the shoot off. Tied at 143 and the first shot, a bullseye. So now it's a matter of closest to the center. And no, Lopez's no, shot no, is not no, even no, in the center no, ring. It is all over. And Alejandra Usquiana shoots the bullseye and gets the victory in this quarterfinal match, defeating her teammate by one single point. And the two friends, the two teammates embrace. And Sarah Lopez with a great performance, but it will be Alejandra Usquiano, the 20-year-old, making her first World Cup final appearance. 
She'll remember her first match of the World Cup. Oh, yeah, that was a good match between teammates. It's, you know, that's what you want to You never want to lose, but if you do, you want to lose it in a shoot-off. An amazing comeback for Usquiano, who trailed by four points after the second end. Got that lead down to two points after the third end. It stayed at two through the fourth end. But then she was able to get back and tie it up in the fifth end, send it to a shoot off where she shot a 10. Lopez shoots a nine. And as a result, it will be Alejandra Usquiano who advances to the semifinals here at the World Cup final in Paris. And there you see her winning form. Great focus, great concentration on that target face, 50 meters away. And Alejandro Usquiano, who had never medaled before this year, is very much in the hunt for a medal here at the World Cup final in Paris. Where you see the great aerial views here. Juan Carlos Holgado and Hit the Roof Productions. Everybody involved with World Archery doing a tremendous job of staging this event here at Trocadero Gardens in Paris, France, where we expect to sell out crowd tomorrow for the recurve competition in which you'll be coaching Brady Ellison. Yes, tomorrow we're really looking forward to hope we have this kind of weather. We'd like to have a little wind tomorrow for us. We shoot better in the wind. Makes things a little bit more interesting, doesn't it? Yeah. But it's going to be fun no matter what because we're in a great venue and this is the first time we've seen that overhead camera. That's, that's really and neat. Gentlemen, please welcome to the field of so play, now we get set for our third quarterfinal match, match of the day. The third of four women's quarterfinal matches and this will pit Christina Berger of Germany against Sochi Yuan of Korea. This is a good look at Christina Berger who will be facing Sochi Yuan for the second time in her career. Christina ranked fifth in the world, 25 years old. She was not Ninth at Shanghai. In fact, she lost to Sok Ji Yun during the qualifying sessions last May in Shanghai. Did pick up a pair of bronze medals, one in Antalya, one in Wrocław. Did not compete in Medellin, Colombia. So the 25-year-old German will be facing Sok Ji Yun of Korea. This Sok, 23 years old, ranked fourth in the world. And this is her first World Cup final appearance as well. She won a gold medal in China, defeating Erica Jones of the United States in individual competition. Also picked up a team gold and a mixed team silver medal as well. Won another silver medal at Antalya, losing to Sarah Lopez in the finals. Didn't compete in Medellin, but was in Poland, finishing ninth at Wrocław. Picked up a bronze team medal there and solidified her spot here at the World Cup final in Paris. So Sok Ji Yun of Korea, fourth in the world, taking on number five, Christina Berger of Germany, who has a draw length of 31 and a half inches. Yeah, Rio, our guys always are jealous of her draw length. This will be shooting first on target number two. Great athlete. And there's a good look at Sok Ji Hyun of Korea. Who, by the way, defeated Albina Loganova in the uh, Shanghai semifinals this year. And at nine, we'll start it off with Sok Ji Hyun. These two archers meeting only once before, as we mentioned. It was last May in Shanghai. He's ten. And Christina Berger has revenge. In her mind, she starts off strong with a bullseye. No, no. And another nine. He's ten. Another ten for Christina Berger. Week eight. And a little shaky, Mel. Yeah, she bobbled a little bit, holding too long. There's that fine line, isn't there? Yeah, he just ain't a little bit on hand. Week eight. Oh, but Christina Berger bails her out. 
She could have gone up by as many as four points. Instead, she settles for a two-point lead. Yeah, that was a surprise. Christina's been shooting good the second half of the year this year. So 28 points for Christina Berger of Germany. Point 26 points for Suk Ji Yoon of Korea, who starts off a little bit slowly, but is fully capable of coming back in this match with four ends and 12 arrows still left to go. Taking on Christina Berger, who's making her second World Cup final appearance. In a previous life, she was a national champion pistol shooter, but made the switch two years ago. I asked her about that yesterday, Mel, and she said, you know what, I just got bored. Yeah, she got bored hitting the X every time with her gun, so. <laughs> she said it was indoors, the weather wasn't a factor. I wanted to be outdoors. I find this more interesting. Yeah, I kind of like see her go back to rifle <laughs> pistol. This is a great marksman. Either way you look at it. Suk Ji Hyun dials it in. Needed to get that first end out of her system. Yeah, those nerves a little. And a nine for Christina, which means that lead is down to one now. 37-36 in favor no, of nine. Christina Berger. Who can pick up another point with a bullseye right here. No, nine. But instead, yeah. it's on the line. That's a nine. The lead remains at one. Just inside the line for a nine. So a score of 28 in that end. And the best that Christina Berger can hope to do is come up with a bullseye right here. And instead comes up with a nine and the lead is down to one. 55-54. Game on. Yeah, it's another good match. They're all gonna be good today. If you're just joining us, Albina Loganova defeated Pascal Lebec by two points. Alejandra Usquiano defeated her teammate Sarah Lopez moments ago in a shootoff, winning the shootoff 10 9. And here, Christina Berger jumps out to a two point lead after the first end. That lead cut down to one after the first six arrows. Nine arrows left to shoot. As you take a good look at Suk Ji Hyun, who won stage one in China and then told everybody, I want to show the world I'm not a one-hit wonder. I think she proved that. Oh, yeah. Their program has come such a long way for their compounders that they're, they're going to be there. They really made a statement as a nation because they had not really made the attempt in compound as they had in recurve in the past, but they've made a concerted effort to be a real player in the compound competition. Oh, yeah, they're all living and training together now. So, so there you see the scores, 55-54. Christina Berger of Germany with the one point lead, which means Suk Ji Hyun of Korea will shoot first on target number two and comes up with a 10. Shows she is definitely getting better as the match goes on. Christina with a 10 as well, just on the line. Just biting that line, it appears. He's dead. Inside the line, yeah. Nine, no. And that's just outside the line, so we are now tied at 74. With La Torre Fell in the background. There's a nine. And a nine for Christina. So the plot doth thicken as we're tied 
at 83. That two-point lead is gone now. And it's anybody's match with six arrows to go at this point, Mel. Yeah, we're going to see who wants it the most right now in the next six arrows. Is the key being able to relax in this situation? Yeah, they need to calm down because their, their adrenaline is really rushing up. And hopefully that's what their coaches are talking about. You hear the coaches talking a lot right now. So hopefully they're trying to calm them down and get them as relaxed as they can get in this situation. Mm -hmm. A lot on the mind of Christina Berger of Germany who last year almost was able to win in her very first appearance at a World Cup stage. That was in Antalya, Turkey. Came out and competed very well against Albina Loganova. Two weeks after Antalya, she dominated the European Championships in Amsterdam, leading the German team to the European title. And Christina Berger has broken two world records already in her brief career. So she's definitely made her presence felt. Yeah, she's making a name for herself in this compound circuit here. Are you surprised somebody can come out and do it that quickly, make the transition from one sport to another and do it that well? You know, she was such an elite shooter that, you know, once she got the basics down and learned the form, her mind was always there. I, she was going to be good no matter what. And a lot of the things that she probably used in pistol shooting also translated over to archery. It probably helped her out more. So there you see the scoreboard. There you see the setting. What a backdrop. The Eiffel Tower. 2013 World Cup final. And Sukshi Yun with a nine to start off the fourth end. He was tied at 83 all at the start of this end, and it's still tied after another nine. So back to Sukshi Hyun, who shot recurve till she was 19, but realized compound was her best bet to join the national team. Right now, big shot right there. Matched by Christina Berger. There you see the target face. We are still tied. Door opens just a bit for Christina Berger. As Ms. Sok gets advice, and there's another 10 for Christina Berger, who I believe has taken the one point lead. Christina Berger over Ms. Sok from Korea. So, an excellent round of officials, mesdames et messieurs, l'avantage d'un point. And there is the target face for Christina Berger. You can see the arrows inside that center ring. And she may look cool, calm, and composed on the outside, but there's a lot going on inside, isn't there? Oh, yeah. Her mind's going 100 miles an hour right now. And I'm sure the same is true for Sok Ji Hyun of Korea, who trains up to 10 hours a day. Scores are official. Christina Berger leading one point. And Christina Berger is up by one. Now that the judges have had a closer inspection, of those targets 50 meters away. And we're heading to the final three arrows right now with Christina Berger up by one single point. It's been that way through the first two matches. Par for the course here in the third. A one point advantage for Christina Berger. But a great start for Sok Ji Hyun the shot she needed. He's and Berger with a bullseye. Trailing by one. He's ten. Another 10 for Sok Ji Hyun. Pressure shifts back to Berger, and a nine means we're tied. So we're down to that one arrow shoot on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the unofficial shoot on. Bullseye. Another bullseye. 10, 10, 10. 
three across the board. And now it's up to Christina Berger. But she shoots a 10-2. Wow. What shooting. Oh, this is some great shooting today. Under the circumstances, in this setting, with this kind of pressure, incredible shooting by both of these archers. And we are going to another one arrow shoot off. That was basically a shoot off right there, Mel. Oh yeah, and they're gonna do it again. And this shows what, what great, great archers we have here today. You know, they we're on our second shoot off in three matches. So it is tied at 141. After the first five ends, the first 15 arrows, and now we go to the one arrow shoot off. And it basically comes down to the same situation we saw, saw just a moment ago between Alejandra Usquiano and Sara Lopez. It's closest to the center. They can both shoot a bullseye, but it's whoever is closest to that spider who comes away with a victory. Yeah, it'll be nice to see the judges have the measure. <laughs> Great form by Sok Ji Hyun. Only 23 years old, Christina Berger, 25 years old. These two should have quite a future ahead of them in the sport. A long and prosperous Ladies future. And right after the calibration of the lasers is so complete, right now, we will commence with our it comes down to one arrow to decide this match. Our second shoot off in the first three matches of the day. Miss Sook will be shooting first on target number two. Sook. So Sok Ji Hyun of Korea, given the green light, straddles the shooting line and draws it back. Just outside the nine ring. All Christina Berger needs to do is put this in the center ring and she advances. Easier said than done. Nine, it's a nine. And Song Ji Hyun is closest to the center. And so when the pressure was really on, Song Ji Hyun was able to come through. It wasn't her best shot of the match, Mel, but it was good enough. Yeah, it was just good enough. I mean, She's moving on, so that's all she really wanted. And we have seen that on so many occasions when you get to this point. Archers who've been shooting bullseyes, all of a sudden, now you get to a shoot off. It's a whole different type of situation in the pressure. I'm not sure you can understand that unless you've been there yourself. Yeah, your, your body changes a lot. Even in, inside, it changes a lot because you're just, your adrenaline is going twice as fast as it was. So, Sok Ji Hyun of Korea advancing as she wins the shoot off. And again, it's a come from behind story. She was down by two points after the first end, got off to a slow start, tied it up in the third end at 83 all. Then it was tied at the end of regulation, the first 15 arrows at 141. She went first, shot a nine, a little bit high of the 10 ring. And that left the door open for Christina Berger, but she was not able to capitalize as she shot a nine herself, very low. And without any doubt, further away from the center of the target. And a disappointing finish for Christina Berger, but a great match between these two archers from Germany and Korea. And now Sok Ji Hyun advances and will wait to find out who she faces next in the semifinals. It'll be the winner of our next match between Erica Jones and Soki Donomo of France. So there you see the beautiful setting here, the fountains at Trocadero Gardens, just across the Seine from the Eiffel Tower. I'm Carl Arke along with Mel Nichols here on a Saturday morning in Paris at the compound quarterfinal matches. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the field of play the competitors for the quarterfinal match. So now we get set for the fourth and final quarterfinal match for the women. We've got four quarterfinal matches coming up for the men. But this is going to be Sophie Dodomo of France. She got in on a wild card, ranked 23rd in the world, Sophie Dodomo. 40 years old in Italia and, the and had four top 10 finishes this season. 
She was 33rd at stage one, but at stage two finished sixth, at stage three finished ninth, and at stage four also finished ninth. So Sophie Dodomo, a crowd favorite here in Paris as the French crowd gives her a nice round of applause. Sophie Dodomo, 40 years old, about to take on the number one female compound archer in the world, Erica Jones of the United States, who says the bar has definitely been raised in compound archery for the women this year. She has noticed the difference. Of course, Erica has had a successful, but in her mind, a little bit frustrating season, coming close on several occasions, but finishing second. She took the silver medal at stage one in Shanghai, losing to Sok Ji Hyun in the finals, won the silver medal in Medellin, losing to Usquiano in the finals, won the silver medal again in Wrocław, Poland, losing to Albina Laganova in the finals, and so she wants to get over that hump here today in Paris. Yeah, she's been having a pretty Eric good year, Jones but she, she wants to get that, that gold, what she's looking for. By most anybody else's standards, Erica has had an outstanding summer, 28 years old, but again, trying to pick up the gold medal as she did two years ago in Istanbul when she clinched the World Cup title there. And Erica will shoot first. Going up against an archer she has never met head to head in competition before. And Erica starts off with a 10 on the line. And an 8 for Sophie Dodomo who was a competitive recurve archer until 2012, switched over to compound after a back injury, and now in 2013 <laughs> finds herself matched against Erica Jones in the quarterfinals of the World Cup here in Paris. Back-to-back -back bullseyes for Erica Jones. No. And a better shot that time by Sophie Dodomo, who is the only compound archer in this field who is an also, also an Olympic medalist. We'll explain in a moment. Tens across the board for Erica Jones to start this match. You can't ask for a better start than that. No, that's what she wanted, and she wants to finish like that, too. Comes down finishing, or starting strong, I should say. <laughs> A good confidence boost for Erica. And another eight for Sophie Dodomo. We were talking moments ago about the fact that she's the only compound archer in this field who's also an Olympic medalist. Sophie was a member of the French team that won the recurve bronze medal in the Beijing Summer Games in 2008. Obviously, compound archers not competing in the Olympics, but Sophie's had the opportunity to be on both sides of it, I guess, and yeah. able to get a medal in recurve. That's an awesome experience. I mean, we, we talk about the archers, and we kind of do our own little scouting report, obviously. And, um, I was hard to find any information on her, so. <laughs> yeah, she was uh, a recurve archer, then uh, suffered the back injury, decided to go to compound instead. She shoots a score of 25 in that opening end. Erica opening up with a perfect 30 to open up a five-point lead as she begins her quest for a gold medal. It would be her first individual gold medal on the World Cup circuit here in 2013. She has picked up some team gold medals. Won a mixed team gold medal in Shanghai to go along with the team silver. Won a silver medal in the team event in Antalya. Then won another mixed team gold medal in Wrocław to go along with a silver team medal in Poland as well. So lots of medals. But that individual gold has eluded Erica Jones thus far. She's off to a good start in this set, or I should say this match. Here in the second end, she started with a five-point lead, has an opportunity to build that Plus lead. Nine. Just out. Good shot.
Wait. And another eight for Sophie Dodomo. So Erica building upon that lead. Coached by her husband, Casey, who made the trip from the United States. Yeah, it's nice to have Casey along with us. A lot of family members and friends coming along, some of them in the coaching box today. We'll see more of that in the men's competition this afternoon. Well, coming up in just a few moments, as a matter of fact. This is the final match in the women's quarterfinals. And with about five seconds to go on the clock, Erica lets it fly, and it's a nine. So she'll go back and confer with her husband. As the crowd on a beautiful Saturday morning in Paris, under perfect conditions, enjoying World Cup archery. Good look at Erica Jones. In 2011, they see her score 58 player. points. Jones, the world record holder, so 58 points for Erica Jones. She's left only two points out there thus far. Sophie Dodomo trying to hang in there against one of the best in the business. Sophie right now with 49 points, so trailing by nine at this point. They're getting back to Erica Jones. 2011, a great year. She clinched that World Cup title in Istanbul. Also won the Longines Prize for Precision. Then last year, she went and got herself married. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of turns your world upside down. She still kept competing, but did not pick up an individual medal in 2012 as she was starting her life out. Now has been able to focus once again a little bit more single-mindedly on the sport of archery. Third end beginning with Sophie Dodemont. Trailing by nine, comes up with a nine. And a bullseye for the woman who's established more than 160 national records, has more than 20 world records indoors and outdoors. That one just outside the nine ring. Nine. Erica also with a nine. He's and finally a bullseye for Sophie Donovo, who gives this French crowd something to cheer about. But a bullseye for Erica Jones as well. So Erica keeping her opponent at arm's length. Erica's been at this a long time. Picked up a bow at the age of six. Was competing in archery tournaments when she was seven. And began shooting professionally in 2006. Winning her first world championship at the age of of 13. That was 15 years ago. She's been doing this almost her entire life, Mel. Yeah, she's been having a good career, and she's still got a long ways to go. She really does, although she mentioned yesterday something about a family, maybe in a couple of years, and so these next couple of years are going to be very important to her. She wants to get a lot accomplished before she starts to raise some kids. Yeah. She'll, she'll do all right. No, she'll be all right, and I imagine that at some point in time, even if she does have a family, we'll see her back out here. Yeah, we've, we've talked about that with our team. Obviously, some of our, our members have families and have kids, and they still travel with us. So the chant of Sophie going up from the crowd here in Paris as we head to the next end. Right now, Erica Jones with a score of 87, and Sophie Dodomo, I believe, with 77 points. 
Sophie Dorval shooting first on target number two. Sophie Devemont va tirer en premier cible numéro deux. So a commanding 10-point lead right now for Erica Jones. And a big mountain to climb for Sophie Dodemont if she is to pull off an upset. Got this nine. Held it a long time. Yeah, she's got a lot of arrows on that left side. Eight, seven, six, five. He's done. Right down the middle. From our vantage point, it looked like she killed the spider. He's And another bullseye for the, the French archer, Sophie Dodomont. Back to back bullseyes for Erica. Not letting up one bit. He's and in the shadow of the Eiffel Tower, Sophie Dodemont with another Dice. Another 10. So Sophie. Again, he's getting the nerves he's out, he's as has Erica Jones. She started off with 30 points in the first end, comes up with 30 more points in this end, and now has a commanding lead in this match. Erica with 117 points through the first 12 arrows. And Sophie Donamont. But I believe a score of 106. Yes, it is 106 up on the scoreboard for Sophie Dodemont. So an 11 point advantage, which I think in this particular event, this particular sport, it's almost insurmountable, Mel. Yeah, any, anything can happen, but. It would take a miss. Yeah, it would take a miss. And I really don't see Erica shooting a miss unless something happens with her equipment. And under these conditions with the winds still, I was going to say they were calm. They were more than calm. There is no wind whatsoever. Ideal conditions, especially for compound archers. So trailing by 11, Sophie Dodemont heading into the final end. Here in the quarterfinals. The winner of this match going on to face Sok Ji Hyun of Korea in the semis. They'll be coming up this afternoon. And another 10, another bullseye for Erica Jones. Relentless in her pursuit of a gold medal. Nice to see Sophie finishing up on a good note. Yeah, she finally got dialed in. Erica with enough of a cushion to be able to shoot that nine and not have to worry as the outcome appears to be Hardly in doubt. And it's over. That's it. She finishes with a bullseye. And Erica Jones with a strong, strong performance. A score of 146. Leaves only four points out there, Mel. Yeah, that's a good start. That's what Erica wanted. Great shooting by Erica Jones in this quarterfinal match.
Great effort by Sophie Dodomo, and I'm sure this has to be one of the great thrills of her life and her career to have been able to compete here in the shadow of the Eiffel Tower in front of her own fans. Oh, yeah, that's got to be an awesome experience. In fact, all these archers that are on that stage are getting so, so valuable experience. It's, it's really good for them. So Erica Jones now has a lay of the land. She has a feel for this particular layout. As does Sok Ji Hyun. That'll be a great match coming up in the semifinals. So Erica advances and will face Sok Ji Hyun in the semifinals. In the other semifinal match, it will be Alejandro Usquiano facing Albina Laganova. Laganova, a two point winner over Pascal Lebec. Usquiano winning in a shoot off against her teammate, Sarah Lopez. Sok Ji Hyun also winning a shoot off over Christina Berge of Germany. And the only blowout that we've had so far in the first four quarterfinal matches, Erica Jones defeating Sophie Dodomo of France. So Loganova, Usquiano, Sokji Yun, and Erica Jones advancing to the semifinals coming up this afternoon here in Paris at Trocadero Fountains and Trocadero Gardens. And there you see the winning form of Erica Jones from Nebraska. Great concentration, great focus. Eyes locked on that target and locked on the prize. But she's got a lot of work still left to do here today. Sophie Dodomo done for the day. She'll be a spectator from here on out, but I'm sure thrilled to have played a part in the 2013 World Cup Finals here in Paris. So the first meeting between those two archers goes to Erica Jones. And now we set the stage for the gentlemen to take over. Some tremendous matches coming up between the men. Matches that include Brayden Galantine of the United States against Min Leong of Korea. Sergio Pagni of Italy taking on Pierre Julien Deloche of France. Martin Damsbo and Patrick Larson. The dueling Danes who will face off in the first quarterfinal match or the second quarterfinal match, I should say, in the men's competition. And we'll get it all started with Dominique Genet and Rio Wild of the United States. As the men prepare to take center stage here in Paris, there's a Ladies good look at the shooting line. Please welcome to the field of play your competitors for the men's compound quarterfinal. And I believe that's Tom Nauman, who is Rio Wild's friend and will be his coach in the box today. And there's a good look at Dominique Genet. Dominique Genet, the Frenchman, ranked seventh in the world, was third in the world back in April, turned 45 in November, and he's going for his first individual medal of 2013. Finished 33rd in Shanghai, 17th in Antalya. Fifth at Medellin and fourth at Wrocław. Just did lose out the bronze medal to Alexander Dambayev. But along the way in Wrocław, he defeated Braden Galantine and also knocked off this man, Rio Wild. Rio Wild, number one in the world, second in the World Cup standings, making his fourth World Cup final appearance. Rio winning the bronze medal in Shanghai to go along with the team gold. Then he was fifth in Antalya. First time he hadn't been in a medal match in many, many moons. Came back strong in Medellin, won the gold medal there, and then finished sixth in Wrocław to secure his spot here in Paris at the World Cup Finals. So number one, Rio Wild of the United States, Pocatello, Idaho, taking on the hometown favorite, Dominique Genet, the seventh ranked archer in the world. And this is their seventh meeting. They've had some great matches, as we said, Mel. In Poland, it was Genet upsetting Rio by two in the quarterfinals. So Rio looking for a little bit of payback. Yeah, Rio's been really waiting for this match here. And these are two great archers, so I, I can't wait to see what happens. Two great competitors. Yeah. So Rio Wild against Dominique Genet. And Rio to shoot first. 
Lots of friends and family back home staying up late into the night. It's 4.14 in the morning back in Pocatello, Idaho, as Rio starts off not quite the way he'd hoped. Peace. Meanwhile, Dominique Genet drills one. Better effort on that shot for Rio as he starts to get dialed in. Dominique Genet dialed in right from the get go. And a bullseye for Rio Wild. So an eight, a nine, and a 10. Got better as each shot progressed. Yeah, it took a little bit to get dialed in. Or as they say in France, dis, dis, dis. Tens across the board. And no matter what Rio Wild did with that final shot, he was going to be trailing. He had the 10, he had the 9, he had the 8. He's down by 3 as. Dominique Genet establishes himself in this first end and leads it 30 to 27. The 27 points for Rio Wild, who won the silver medal last year at the World Cup final in Tokyo, where he lost in the final match against Braden Gelantine, his teammate of the United States. We'll see Braden Gelantine coming up in just a little bit. Rio also winning a silver medal at the 2011 World Cup final in Istanbul, where he lost to Roger Willett Jr. Right now, he's just concerned about getting to that gold medal match. Yeah, he needs to just bear down a little bit and do some work, and he's going to be fine. Janae and Wild have met six times in World Cup events. Rio Wild leading in the victory count four to two. But as we said, their last encounter went to Dominique Genet, who won that match in the quarterfinals in Wrocław, 149 to 147. So Rio trailing by three. And nine. Digging himself a bit of a hole after that first <laughs> end, but starting to dig his way out of it. How much tougher is it, Mel? And I was going to ask the question. I guess he answered it right there. How tough is it when you've got that lead? Yeah, he's, you know, he's on his game right now, so I don't think he's going to miss very much. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Just outside the ten ring. So real wild. Could fall behind even further if Dominique Genet continues his string of tens, and he does. Genet inspired here at the start of this quarterfinal match. And just outside the ten ring again. Just barely missing. In a game of tens, Dominique Genet has been flawless so far. Eight. But everybody's human, eight. and that's an eight. Exactly. And that's a break for Rio Wild. So Genet, I believe, with 58 points, and Rio Wild with 55. So there's the score. 58 to 55 is the score, so it remains a three-point advantage. And really, I think Rio Wild got a bit of a break right there. Yeah, he did, and it looks like he's uh, adjusting his release just a little bit, taking him a lot longer on his shot. So we'll see what happens on the next end. By the way, I want to tip our cap to the official sponsors of World Cup Archery, Kia Motors, Sport Toto, Fila, Turkish Airlines, T4's Events, and Longines. The Longines prize for precision up for grabs this year in compound archery. So Dominique Genet dominating early on in the first six arrows, but still nine arrows left to shoot. 
And Rio Wild on target number two will shoot first, trailing by three, trying to start a comeback. <laughs> and it's just a little bit high and outside. So the frustration continues for Rio Wild. And Dominique Genet back inside the center ring after firing an eight on his final shot of the second end. Ten, nine, eight, seven. More six, than a little pressure five. right now on Rio Wild. Peace. And Rio responds. Comes up with a ten. Peace. On the line. It'll count as a ten. And again, Rio Wild Ten, must respond. Nine, eight. And he does. Bullseye for Rio Wild. Had to have that shot, and he got it. So here is Genet, who finished seventh in Tokyo last year at the 2012 World Cup Final. And there he is with another 10. And so Genet now has 88 points up on the board and builds on his lead. So 88 points for Dominique Genet. And there you see the 10s across the board. Dis, dis, dis. And Dominique Genet, obviously inspired by the crowd here in Paris, which is growing as the morning goes on. 84 points right now for Rio Wild. He's in a bit of a uh, pickle, as we like to say in Pocatello. <laughs> yeah, he's dug himself a hole, and Janae's shooting really well, so. Rio with the release, and Dominique Janae. Great form as well. So perhaps an upset in the making right now as the seventh ranked archer in men's compound has a four point lead on the number one archer in men's compound, Rio Wild of the United States. This the seventh meeting between the two men. In head to head competition, down the middle, Rio Wild, bullseye. And Genet with another 10. Does not appear to be inclined to let Rio Wild back into this match. But all Rio can do right now is take care of his own business. And at that time, it's a nine. And Janae obliges by shooting a nine as well. So the lead stays at four. Peace. Rio back in the center ring with another 10. So a pair of bullseyes and a nine in that end. And if you're a real wild fan, you have to hope for a break right here from Dominique Janae. Yeah, Dominique Janae. With another 10. So 117 points on the board right now for Dominique Genet. So Dominique Genet right now with what appears to still be a four point lead, 117 to 113. 117 points for the Frenchman. Who was a gold medalist at stage three in Antalya back in 2009. And Dominique Genet, who defeated Rio Wild by just two points in the quarterfinals a month ago in Poland, is on the verge of upsetting Rio Wild once again so here in the quarterfinals the of the men's compound matches at the World Cup final in Paris. Final end coming up. 
Rio, of course, did win the first World Cup final in 2006. That was in Mexico. And trying to win again. But it's only gotten much more difficult over the last seven years. Ten, nine, eight. Carl Arkey along with. <laughs> Mel Nichols, one of America's top coaches, as we take in the competition here and another 10. And this crowd, really in Dominique Genet's corner. And with two arrows to go, Rio Wild drills another bullseye, but it may be too little too late. Janae giving back a point. So three points separating unofficially these two archers with one arrow left to go. 10, 9, 8. Tom Nauman <gasps> counting it down, and it's a 9 on Rio's last shot, it would appear, of this quarterfinal match. Has to be a frustrating feeling for Rio right now as he sits back <gasps> and watches a 9 from Dominique Janae. But that should be enough to do it. It's all over. And Dominique Genet, the Frenchman. Ladies and gentlemen, your first winner for the men's quarterfinal, Dominique Genet. So there you go, Dominique Genet advancing to the semifinals. As he upsets Rio Wild in the quarterfinals, Rio with 142 points. Most mortals would think that that's a pretty good score, but for Rio Wild, I know it's disappointing. Yeah, he'll go back and do work, and he'll be he'll be ready for his next tournament, which will be the World Championships in Velik in yes. Turkey in about two weeks. Yeah, we'll actually go home for three days, turn around, get on another plane, and fly back to Turkey. I never want to hear another athlete complain about their travel schedule. They ought to try what these folks have to do. Yeah. So a roar goes up from the crowd here at Rocadero Gardens in Paris as Dominique Genet came out and dominated from the get-go. Posted three straight bullseyes in that opening end to open up a three-point lead and ends up winning by three points, 145 to 142. So Dominique Genet. Pulls off the upset in the quarterfinal match. And now we'll sit back to find out who he'll face in the semifinals. It'll be the winner of our next match between Martin Damsbo and Patrick Larson, the two archers from Denmark. But just great shooting from start to finish by Dominique Genet. If he had any pressure or felt any pressure, it didn't show, Mel. No, he used his home crowd, and I think it's working his favor, and we'll see how the rest of the day goes because it's going to get louder and they're going to cheer him on even more in the next match, I'm sure. As the crowds build here at the Trocadero Fountains, one of the greatest settings ever for World Cup archery. They've held this event at the Pyramids in Mexico, in Dubai, Edinburgh, Copenhagen. But this, I think, Ladies probably tops them all. No, this is the most beautiful play. setting we've ever seen. The competitors for compound men's quarterfinal number so two. the first yeah, men's yeah, compound yeah, quarterfinal match is in the books right now. And now we get set for quarterfinal match number two. And it's the dueling Danes, number six, Patrick Larson, ranked sixth in the world. Patrick Larson, 25 years old, fifth in the World Cup rankings, did not compete in Shanghai, then went to Antalya, picked up a gold medal there, beating Martin Damsbo in the semifinals, and then defeating Roger Willett Jr. for the gold medal. Did not make the trip to Medellin, competed in Wurzwaff and finished ninth. So there's a good look at Patrick Larson, big, strong archer from Denmark. 
who is ranked sixth in the world right now coming into this match, and he will take on the man ranked number four in the world, and that is Martin Damsbo, 28 years old, was ranked second in the world back in 2010. This year, won the silver medal in Shanghai, losing to Braden Gelantine in the gold medal match. Picked up a bronze medal in Antalya, where he beat Braden Gelantine in that match. We'll tell you more about that in a moment. Some interesting circumstances surrounding that matchup. He was fourth in Medellin, and then 17th out of Wrocław. So he's had an outstanding summer season. Very, very consistent in picking up medals, individual medals at the first two stages. Yeah, he's really, Martin's always a great shooter. He's always really consistent. So we, we see him a lot in final venues. Talked to both of these gentlemen yesterday. In fact, I watched them eating breakfast together this morning. You know, it's an interesting situation, and neither one is thrilled about having to go up against each other in the first match, in the first quarterfinal match, but that's the way it's played out, and, you know, you just have to go out there and shoot. Yeah, you have to take care of business now. He's so a 10. Good start for Martin Damsbo and Patrick Larson. who makes his living as an auto mechanic, goes to work and shoots a nine. Another 10 for Dams Bell, who means business. He watched Patrick Larson shoot a perfect score of 150 in Antalya. There was nothing Damsbo could do on that day as Larson shot the perfect score of 150. And there you saw him pull it back a little bit, Mel. He got it inside the 10 ring. Yeah, he, he worked a little English on that shot. That's where experience pays off, huh? Yeah. Carl Arkey along with Mel Nichols of the United States coaching team. And Patrick Larson finally finds himself in the center ring. But a good start by Damsbo. Three straight tens to start it off strong. And Damsbo establishes himself early on. We were talking about that bronze medal he won in Antalya beating Braden Gelantine. In that match, he lent Braden his backup bow and allowed Braden to use that backup bow against him in competition. And he, he caught a little flack from some people who wondered why he would do that. Yeah. But his response was, hey, if I can't beat him with my backup bow that he hasn't even practiced with, then I don't deserve to win. Yeah, Mark Martin's a class act. Uh, a lot of people don't know five years ago, he loaned Brady a bow. And Brady shot compound and recurved that, that day in Croatia. And Martin's just such a nice guy. You know, it's good to have him in our sports. And, and great sportsmen throughout this, this sport of archery. But I thought that was one of the classiest moves I've ever seen. And then, you know, he lent him the bow and then he went out and beat him. Yeah. <laughs> good look at Martin Damsbo, 28 years old, a wealth of experience in World Cup archery. Won a team gold medal in Turkey this year with Stefan Hansen and Patrick Larson, the man he's competing against right now, and leads. Bullseye for Larson to start off the second end. Torben Johansson coaching. Counting it down, and a nine for Martin Damsbo. Good to see Torben back. After struggling with his health in the past few months, and there's Larson with a nine. And again, you could see him try to use that body English and <laughs> coax that one back into the center ring. Another nine. For Damsbo, who leads by one, 48 47. So an eight will tie it, a nine will allow Damsbo to maintain the lead, and a bullseye would give him back the two point advantage. 
And there's the two-point advantage as he fires a bullseye on his third and final shot of the second end. So Damsbo up by two after the first end, maintains his two-point advantage over Patrick Larson. Patrick Larson won that gold medal in Antalya at stage two. He was not supposed to be in Antalya. He was an alternate, and at the last moment, somebody dropped out. They asked him if he wanted to go. He had to pay his own way, but it paid off. Yeah, you know, sometimes you do what you have to do, and if, if you get lucky enough and someone steps out or unfortunately can't go, you try to go and get these points so you can make it here to the finals. And he took a full advantage of the opportunity. There's his wife. He was able to bring her to the finals, and this time the uh, Danish Federation is uh, paying the way. Yeah for Patrick and his wife. So there you see the totals after the first six arrows. Damsvo with a two-point advantage, 58 to 56. Both of them shooting scores, similar scores in that second end. And Patrick Larson will shoot first. So a good start on his seventh shot of the match. And Damsbo matches it. Another 10 for Larson, who's capable of getting on those hot streaks. Oh, yes. Such a good shooter. And Martin, well aware of that fact. Knows his teammate very, very well. And another 10 for Martin Damsbo. So far, nobody has blinked here in this end. The first four arrows. All in the center Please. ring, and that is the first one outside, and it is way outside in the eight ring. Great opportunity right now for Martin Damsbo, who takes advantage a bit with a nine. That allows him to pick up one more point, and he now leads it 87 to 84. So that eight does not come back to bite Patrick Larson as much as it might have. As you take a look at the scores in that third end, two tens and a nine for Martin Damsbo, two tens and an eight for Patrick Larson. Martin Damsbo really a testament to persevering in this sport. Up until stage one in Shanghai, it had been three years since he had made his last appearance in a World Cup gold medal match. So he'd gone three years without getting to a gold medal match, but he kept trying, Mel. Yeah, and that's, that's amazing. He, he keeps working no matter what. It doesn't matter to him. He wants to accomplish something, and, you know, all his hard work is paid off now. Yeah, those, those are the guys who eventually have success because they hang in there, they stay with it, they go through the ups and the downs, and eventually it works out. Yeah, if you're in this sport, you, you have to keep going because there's, there's a lot of not-so-good days <laughs> that you need to overcome. Of course, Martin's had some great days. This season alone, he's beaten the likes of Sergio Pagni, Rio Wild, and Peter Elzinga, to name just a few. So now Patrick Larson trailing by three, 87-84. First shot of the fourth end, and it's a good one. Damsbo gives back a point. Lead is down to two, 96-94. Larson still with a chance. Fimpton. T. N. O. D. And the lead remains at two, 106-104, in favor of Martin Damsbo. Yes. 
Very, very close. They'll put the asterisk by it, but looks like that was on the line, Mel. Yeah, it's, it's so close. We'll have to see what the judges say. So unofficially, it's a nine. Could be a ten. Two, six, ten. Nine points. And with a nine by Martin Damsbo, the lead will either be two or it may be down to one. And this is where those judges really have to earn their keep. Yeah. They go out there and they, they measure it and they will look at it very closely. Put the glasses on it, put the magnifying glass on it and see if it's touching that line at all. Yeah, and this is a unique tournament that we don't have any of our the national country staff down there pulling and talking to the judges. So it's gonna be interesting to see what happens. So no agents, huh? No agents. And a good agent can make a big difference, right? Yeah, we, um, we, we try to call everything in. <laughs> Somebody down there pleading your case on your behalf. Just making those scores official, looks like Martin Damsbo still has a two-point lead. It is still a two-point lead. Apparently it was just outside the 10 ring. So he's got a little cushion now for the last 10. So 115 for Martin Damsbo, a score of 112 for Patrick Larson, who was hoping it would be 113, and he'd have only two points to make up in this final end. Patrick it is 113, excuse me. So still anybody's match right now, too close to call. As Martin Damsbo still has work to be done. Leading his teammate Patrick Larson by two points, and Larson starts off with a nine. Needs to be shooting tens at this point. And Damsbo also with a nine. Back to Larson now, 25 years old, and has been on the international stage since 2006. Won a Team Silver medal at Stage 2 in Antalya 2012. Team Silver at the World Championships in Torino 2011. A Team Silver in 2011 at Stage 2. He's been the bridesmaid many times, never the bride, so to speak. Maybe I should say the groom. Instead of the groom. Yeah. Nines across the board. Still a two-point advantage as we head to the final arrow. What appears to be the final arrow of this match. See. All right, a bullseye makes things more interesting. The drama, the suspense still there. An eight would tie it and send it to a shoot off. A nine or better will win it. Martin Damsbo with a bullseye to win it. And put it into this affair. Martin Damsbo with a big shot. A huge shot to finish it off. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Patrick. Larson. So a great, great performance by Martin Damsbo. Patrick Larson getting a big hit, a hug from Torben Johansson. And for a young man making his first appearance at a World Cup final, Patrick Larson, I thought, handled himself very well. Yes, he did very well, especially finishing up with a 10. That's what you want to do. As Martin Damsbo doffs his cap to the crowd, his chapeau here in Paris. And the duel between the Danes is over, and Martin Damsbo comes away victorious with a bullseye on his final shot of the match. And there's the final score, 143 to 141. Another very close match. And Damsbo comes away with the victory, and so he will face Dominique Genet in the semifinals coming up this afternoon. Coming up on our agenda, we've got two more of the men's quarterfinal matches. Then we'll have the mixed team gold medal match between Italy and France. So more in store here on a Saturday morning in Paris as you take a look at the two Danes who just did battle, Patrick Larson and Martin Damsbo. So in the shadow of the Eiffel Tower, at the foot of one of the most iconic landmarks in the world. We get set for our third men's quarterfinal match. If you're just joining us, 
in women's action this morning. It was Albina Laganova defeating Pascal Lebec by two points. Alejandra Usquiano defeated Sarah Lopez in a shoot-off. Sokji Yun of Korea defeating Christina Berger in a shoot-off. And Erica Jones of the United States with a comfortable win over Sophie Dudemont of France. So far here in the men's quarterfinal actions, we've not had a shoot-off, but we've had some close action. Dominique Genet defeating Rio Wild in a major Ladies upset. Genet number seven in the world, Rio Wild number one, but Genet won by three. And now we've just had Martin Damsbo defeat his uh, fellow countryman, Patrick Larson, by two points. So now we get ready for the third quarterfinal match, and it will feature this man, number five in the world, Sergio Pagni of Italy, taking the stage. Here at Mocadero Gardens in Paris. Fifth in the world, was number one back in 2010. Finished eighth in Shanghai, 33rd in Antalya, ninth at Medellin, but then won the silver medal in Wrocław. He defeated Dominique Genet in a semifinal shoot-off and then lost to Pierre-Julien Deloche in the gold medal match in Wrocław, Poland. And as luck would have it, he didn't have to wait long for a rematch because he is facing Pierre-Julien Deloche right here, right now in Paris. Pierre-Julien Deloche, third in the world, 31 years old, and this has been his best year so far on the international stage. Pierre finishing ninth in Shanghai at stage one with 17th in Turkey, 17th in Colombia. As you hear the roar of the crowd go up here in Paris. But what really clinched it for him, Mel, was he was able to win that gold medal, defeating Sergio Pagni in the gold medal match in, in Wrocław, Poland. That's what got him here to Paris. Yeah, and that was a really good match. I know both these guys are, are waiting for this one here because they knew they were going to meet up again. He was disappointed. He told me yesterday it was a slow start for him in the outdoor season. He had had such a good indoor season. He was trying to translate that and get it to transfer over to the outdoors, and it took some time. Yeah, and there's so many events now, indoors and outdoors. It's hard. You know, we don't get an off-season anymore. <laughs> it's a year-round sport, no question about that, especially for the athletes at this level. And so Pierre-Julien Deloche, number three in the world, taking on number five, Sergio Pagni of Italy, one of the greatest to ever compete in this sport. Shooting from the left side. Peace. And a bullseye for Sergio. So Pagni with a great start. Peace. And a bullseye for Pierre Julien Deloche. And every time he finds that center ring, you're gonna hear that cheer go up from this crowd. Nine. So a nine for Pagny, whose wife Pia is in the coaching box with him today here in Paris. Back to Deloche, who can take the lead He's with nine. another bullseye, and he does. So Deloche establishes himself as the early leader. Of course, that could change on this next shot. As Sergio fires back. A nine ties it, a 10 allows Deloche to enjoy a one point edge after the first end. Five, God, walk, two, uh. six, six. A six. Not what we expected, Mel. No, he held way too long. He got that shot off with about one second left. That's way too long to shoot a shot. Is that a sign of thinking about it too long? Yeah, he stopped working his shot. And he was just overthinking it. So instead of a natural shot, he held it too long and tried to think it through too much. Yeah, you have to trust a lot. And if you don't trust, then you start thinking. When you think, it's not that great. Paralysis through analysis. <laughs> yes. So a six, a surprising six. That took some of the air out of this crowd. There's no question about that. Deloche with 26 points. He had fired a couple of bullseyes on his first two shots, but a six on that third shot of the first end. 
And there's Pony with the 29, just consistent shooting. And so Sergio surges into the lead after the first three arrows. Still a long way to go on this one. As you take a look at Pierre Julien Deloche, who finished sixth last year at the Archery World Cup final in Tokyo. Pierre gaining a lot of confidence after that victory over Pony in Poland. And comes battling back. That's a good sign. Yeah, that was a good shot. That may be one of the toughest things to forget about that last shot and just look ahead to the next one. Yes, he did a good job there. Carl Arkey along with Mel Nichols. Bringing you the action here in Paris. And another 10 for Deloche. Pony with another bullseye. Oh, excuse me, Deloche. Excuse me. Now we go back to Sergio, and Sergio does come through with the 10 to maintain his three point lead 49 46 now. for Deloche. Back into the match. And Pony can ill afford to let up, and he does not. The mark of a champion, Sergio Pony, coming up with three straight tens himself. Cool, calm customer. The only athlete to ever repeat as a World Cup final champion. He did win back-to-back -back titles in Copenhagen in 2009, Edinburgh in 2010. This is his third trip to the World Cup finals in five years, trying to win his third title in five years. Would be a, an amazing accomplishment. Yeah, Sergio is, is uh, just an amazing archer to begin with, and he, he was really looking forward to this tournament. We talked to him last night, and he was, he was really excited. It's good to see. So Pierre Julien Deloche, were it not for that six on his third shot of the first end, this match might be even closer. Let's make some noise for Sergio! So there you go, there you see the scores. Sergio Pagni jumping off to that three point lead in the first end. Both archers shooting three tens in the second end. And it's 59 to 56 in favor of the Italian. So Deloche down by three to shoot first. On target number one. Right. And another bullseye for Pierre Julien Deloche. Pagny puts one in the center ring again. And once you fall behind someone like Sergio Pagny, it's very, very, very difficult to try to make up that ground. Yeah, Sergio doesn't falter very often at all. No, he does not. Sergio trying to get some payback for that loss in Poland to Pierre Julien de Loche in head-to-head -head competition between these two. Pony had led the victory count for nothing up until Poland, where Deloche won by two, 145 to 143. So Pony leads in head-to-head -head encounters, four to one. This the sixth meeting between these two great archers and three straight tens for Pierre Julien Deloche. Not giving up the battle, not by any stretch of the imagination, and neither is Sergio Pagni. Can anybody miss? Actually, it was Pierre Julien Deloche who missed on that third shot of the first end, and that's the difference right now, as the lead remains at three for Sergio Pagni over Pierre Julien Deloche. 
who serves in the French Navy as a petty officer. Watches out for and then helps ships in distress. Right now, he's in a bit of distress right now, down by three, Mel. Yeah, that six was unfortunate. These guys are both shooting just great. What's amazing to me, though, is how Pierre Julien Deloche has been able to forget about that in all sports. That's really a key. You know, forget about the last play, forget about the last shot. You can't change that. You just have to focus on what's ahead of you. Yeah, you can only make the future better. You can't change the past. So he's, he's doing a great job doing that. Yeah, and that shows maturity. It shows strength, mental fortitude. And that's why he's still in this match, and that's why he still has a chance. Still trailing by three, but six arrows left to go in a sport where anything can happen and has happened. We have seen it before. There are your scores. 89, 86 after three ends. Deloche peering through that sight. Lines up the shot, and it's a bullseye. Pagni with a 10. Sergio Pagni keeps pounding away. And another 10. Bullseye for Pony. Delosh drills it again. Dees, dees, dees. Ten, ten, ten. Tens across the board. And ever since that final shot of the first end, Pierre Julien Deloche has been flawless, but so has Sergio Pagni. What shooting. Oh, these Tremendous two guys are shooting. putting on a great show for the fans out here. An amazing display of marksmanship here by Sergio Pagni and Pierre Julien Deloche, who, by the way, does have his own website, pjdeloche.com. So if you're uh, looking for updated information on Pierre Julien Deloche, what he's doing, where he's going, some of his advice on how to set up your bow, things of that nature. PJDeloche.com. Pierre, talking to him yesterday, just so proud to be here and proud to be on this site and representing his country in a, in a place where, frankly, so much history has been made. Yeah, all the, all the French arches are really glowing, cause, and they should be, because this is, this is just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, showing off as if they have to show off. As we said earlier, this is the world's top destination for tourists. You see them all over the place, milling about. The Eiffel Tower over here at Trocadero Gardens, up and down the River Seine. Truly one of the world's most beautiful cities. And we've had outstanding weather, great conditions, and amazing archery, especially in this match right here. At this point, really only one arrow separates these two archers yes. as Pierre Julien Deloche just simply refuses to miss. Yeah. But he's got a problem. Sergio Pagni has refused to miss as well. So far, but that was close. Put that one on the line, it counts as a 10. Deloche looking at that target 50 meters away. Across the fountain, and he finds the 10 ring. Another 10 for Sergio Pagni. By the way, the winner of this match We'll go on and face either Braden Galantine or Min Leong of Korea. 
depending upon the outcome of the following match. Another 10 for Deloach. 10, 10, 10. 10. And he finishes up with a score of 146. On most times and most days, that would be enough to win, but not against Sergio Pagni, who was almost perfect. 149 out of 150 almost has a perfect score, and Sergio Pagni survives. Yeah, that was a great match for between two good archers there. And it's very nice to see this picture. What a great sportsman, Pierre Julien Deloche, applauding the crowd here in Paris. Disappointed, I'm sure, that he's not advancing and moving on, but boy, he ran up against it today in Sergio Pagni, who missed only one point throughout the entire match. Out of 15 arrows, was just a little bit off on one. Yeah, and that one, you know, it might have cost him a match, but he shouldn't be disappointed about anything. He did great. Anye with 149 points to 146 for Pierre Julien Deloche, who had that six on the third shot of the match. And that proved to be the difference right there. As you can see, in the ensuing ends, they all shot perfectly from that point on. Nobody missed after the first end. Nobody blinked. But it was that six by Pierre Julien Deloche on his third shot that proved to be the difference. But he puts on a great, great performance here and has nothing to be ashamed of at all. In fact, did his country proud out here against one of the best in the business, Sergio Pagni, who also happens to be one of his better friends on the Archery World Cup circuit. Great sportsmanship, great shooting, great performances. And it's Sergio Pagni who merges victorious here on a Saturday morning in Paris at his fifth World Cup final trying to win his third title in five years. Can he get it done? We shall see. As he now sits back and awaits to find out whom he'll be facing in the semifinals coming up this afternoon here at the Trocadero Fountains at Trocadero Chardin. So now we get set for the fourth and final men's compound quarterfinal match here at the 2013 Archery World Cup Final. This will be Korea against the United States. Min Leong ranks sem sec uh, 22nd in the world. Takes the stage. Min Leong, 22 years old. He is the first Korean male to ever compete in the compound quarterfinals, representing his nation in this sport. Yeah, they're, they're very proud of that, too. You know, they're, they're working hard. They all are working hard. And he, he's really enjoying his time here. We've been able to walk around the Eiffel Tower with him a little bit, and he's having a good time here. Had a good time this summer, was sixth in China, fifth in Antalya, and 16th in Wrocław. And he'll have his hands full today with a man who's got a lot of confidence as well he should. Braden Galantine of the United States, ranked number two in the world, number one in World Cup points and the World Cup standings. Braden Galantine, who started off the year in sensational fashion, three gold medals in Shanghai, one of them an individual gold medal, defeated Martin Damsville for the gold medal, and also knocked off Min Leong in the quarterfinals in Shanghai. That's the man he'll be facing right here and right now in Paris. Braden would go on and finish fourth in Antalya, picked up a silver medal at Medellin in Colombia, and finished the season strong with a team gold medal at stage four in Wrocław. So the stage is set now here in Paris as we get set for the fourth men's quarterfinal match in the compound competition. Braden Galantine of the United States versus Min Leong of Korea and Braden Galantine shoots nine. first on target number one and scores a nine. So Min Leong trying to avenge <laughs> his defeat to Braden Galantine in China back in May. Starts off with a 10 and takes a one point lead. Galantine comes back with a bullseye. Braden with his dad, Don, in the coaching box today, making the trip from the United States along with his son. 
did that last year and it worked out pretty well in Tokyo. Right now things working out well for Min Leong. And another 10 for Braden Gellin team. So a 9, a 10, and a 10. The 22 year old Korean finishes it strong. 10s across the board, and he has a one point lead after the first end. So Min Leong bidding for another upset. We've seen one already as Rio Wild, ranked number one in the world, was defeated by. Number seven, Dominique Genet. That was in the men's first quarterfinal match. Then it was Martin Damsbo defeating his teammate Patrick Larson by two points, 143 to 141. One of the best matches we've seen all day, Sergio Pagni putting on a performance, as did Pierre Julien Deloche. Pagni winning at 149 to 146. And right now, it's Min Leong of Korea, 22 years old, taking on Braden Galantine of the United States, who's 27 years old. And Braden finds himself trailing by one. So a good start for the Korean. Yes, this, this young Korean boy here, he's going to have a great career. He's, he's working hard, and he really wants to accomplish all, this, all his goals. That's Mel Nichols. Team USA coach, I'm Carl Arkey, and we're glad you're with us wherever you happen to be in this wide world of ours, whether it's morning, afternoon, evening, middle of the night, we're glad you're watching. And a bullseye for Braden to start off the second end. Min Leong trying to maintain the pressure. Yes. Which he does. Yes. Another strong shot from Braden Gellantine. Both of these guys are so strong mentally. Oh yes, they're they're really tough. Yes. As displayed by that shot. Mean Leong. Yet to miss his first five shots have been bullseyes. Another bullseye. Three straight tens for Braden Gellantine. But it would appear there's very little margin for error in this match. Mean Leon. Six straight tens. Perfect so, so far. Yes, that's, that's just great shooting there. So Min Leong throwing darts right now and has not missed on his first six shots of the match. Braden Gellantine with five bullseyes, just a little bit off though on his first shot. That was a nine and he trails by one, scores 60 to 59. Six arrows in the books, nine arrows left to be shot. Have not had a shoot off yet amongst the men. Had a pair of shoot offs earlier this morning amongst the ladies. The men's matches have been close, well played, great competition, but as of yet, none have gone to a shoot off. Braden Gellantine right now just knows he's got to keep shooting tens and hopes that Mean Leon will miss and give him a chance to get back into it. Min Leong, who did not medal at Antalya and Korea, did not compete in Colombia, so he did not compete <laughs> there. Had no chance to pick up points. <clears throat> but it was a fifth place finish in Antalya. Plus the fact that he picked up some more points along the way that allowed him to get two this World Cup final, and now he has shot seven straight bullseyes. Braden has shot six in a row. He's Make that dead. seven in a row. Shot by. Can Mean Leong remain clean? Like no. Nine. Finally, a Did miss. Nice. On his eighth shot of the match, and we're tied at 79 all. 
This, this, this. Yeah. And Braden Galantine puts the pedal to the metal and really puts the pressure back on Min Leong. Let's see how he responds after just missing on that shot. His eighth shot, and this is his ninth. And he's high, so two nines. Might have been a little bit rattled by that first nine. Yeah, he, you know, he was shooting so well, hopefully he'll be able to regroup and come on. But watching Braden's um, body language when he came off the line, I have a hard time believing Braden's going to miss now. Braden gets fired up. He's one of the most emotional archers I've seen. Yeah, we can hear him up here. That, that's pretty loud. Yeah, he brings a lot of intensity and a lot of fire to the competition, and he's not afraid to show his emotion. Fell behind a little bit early on, but those two nines posted by Min Leung means he's got 88 points. And Braden Gelantine now with 89 goes up by one. So that's a two point swing from the second end to the third end. As Min Leung had a one point lead at 60 to 59 after the first six arrows, nine after, now after nine arrows. It's Braden Gelantine up by one, 89 to 88. So those two nines shot by Min Leong while Braden Gelantine was running the table, shooting three straight tens. All converts to a two point swing. And the number two archer in men's compound competition now leads it by one over Min Leong, who came in ranked 22nd in the world. The Korean bidding for another upset. We've already seen one this morning with Dominique Genet upsetting Rio Wild of the United States. Min Leong back with a bullseye. And Gillantine knows he cannot afford to let up. Every shot critical. And the Korean keeps the pressure on Braden Gillantine, who broke through last fall at the World Cup Finals in Tokyo, where he won the gold medal. He'd love to do it again here in Paris. And he shoots another 10. Another nine for Min Leong. So here's another opportunity for Braden Gelantine to widen his lead just a little bit more. And he does. Three straight 10. High five with his dad, Don. And he's pumped up, Mel. Oh, yeah, he's excited. And we like to see that. It works for him, doesn't it? Yeah. We're not disrespecting anybody, but it's just way for him to get up knowing that he needs, he needs to keep shooting 10. And there you see he has not missed on a shot over the last three ends. And that nine early on in the first end, but has strung together a bunch of bullseyes. And as the result, has a two-point lead. 119 to 117 over Min Leong of Korea. So Braden Galantine, who started shooting at the age of 11, was one of the rising stars in this sport. Got a little bit frustrated. Again, that was emotions. Put the sport aside for a little while. Took a year off, then came back, a little bit older, a little bit wiser, a little bit more mature, now able to use his emotions to his advantage. Yeah, that break help out, helps out a lot of archers. Down by two, Min Leong, as we head to the final end. His first shot of that final end is in the center ring. It's a bullseye. And Braden not letting off one little bit. Right on the line. Peace. 
ten points. Great grouping. Yeah, they're almost touching. Of course, it was a close match the first time these two men in Shanghai in the quarterfinals in China at stage one. That was a three-point match that went the way of Braden Gellin team, but great, great shooting by Min Leon. Fantastic right. shooting by the 22-year-old Korean. Nine by Braden Gellin team on his final shot, but he had some room to work with, a little bit of uh, margin for error right there, and the nine, if you want to call it an error. But a great Ladies shot to finish it off. Of and Braden Gallantine comes from behind as he wins it 148 to 146. Please give it up for Korea's Min Leong. Min Leong showing he's going to be a factor for many, many years to come. But Braden Gallantine almost flawless out there, missing on only two of his 15 shots. And he'll pose with Dad for the pictures. As we take another look at the form and the style of these two great archers, Min Leong, the first male from Korea to compete at the World Cup Finals in compound archery and putting on a great performance and almost able to pull off the upset against the second seeded or second ranked in the world, I should say, Braden Gelantine. But Gelantine coming through after shooting a nine in the first end, putting up 148 out of a possible score of 150. Actually, it was 147 for Min Leong. My apologies to the 22-year-old Korean as Braden did give back a point in that fourth, or excuse me, fifth end. But he had that room to work with, and he wins 148 to 147. So no shoot-offs amongst the men, but some very, very close matches, Mel. Yeah, it's getting tighter and tighter, and the next afternoon session is going to be really good. So right now we know that uh, it'll be Braden Gelantine taking on Sergio Pagni in one of the semifinal matches. And in the other semifinal match, it will be Martin Damsbo pitted against the Frenchman Dominique Genet, who defeated Rio Wild in an upset. The seventh ranked archer in the world, Dominique Genet, defeating number one, Rio Wild, in an upset to get things started for the men. So some great semifinal matches coming up later on this afternoon, and we hope you'll join us for that.